Hello everyone and welcome to an introduction to time series. Uh, my name is Ben Rogajan. In this series of videos, what we're going to do is go over first just an introduction to time series, but we'll eventually start delving into developing predictive models such as uh, some of the more basic models into things like ARIMA and ETS models. Uh, but I first wanted to start out with just an intro to what is a time series. Uh, just to get everyone on the same footing. Also, just in case some of you haven't used R too much, I really wanted to make sure that you start getting accustomed to what R looks like, how it runs, and so that you're comfortable uh, as this course goes forward and as this series goes forward. So just to start out with, we're going to talk about the time series object in R. Um, so the time series object is a data object in R that allows you to hold a time series. So a time series refers to a data set that is uh, one part data and another part time. So for instance, a stock price could be a time series when you include you know, the date that you recorded that stock price and the actual stock price. It could also be uh, keeping track of how many items you sell um, per day or per month. It could keep, it could be uh, a time series could be something like quarterly finances or something of that nature. So it, there's there's two parts. You've got the, you've got the time component and you've got your actual data component that you're keeping track of. Now in R there is the time series function which is just denoted with TS and then the parentheses. This time series function allows for uh, four parameters in particular. It allows for your data parameter. Uh, this would be, for instance, your stock price or the amount of items you sold. Um, for instance, in the, in the example I give across, uh, we just use a R norm, which is a, a normal distribution of data um, data set. And then after that, you've got your start and end parameters. This basically denotes the start and end uh, of the data series itself. You at there are defaults for this, but if you want to be more specific, for instance, you know this data set starts in 2015, you want to make sure that that's what's denoted. And then finally, frequency is the last parameter, and frequency uh, depicts how often you want this time series to be, uh, basically, what, what is the frequency of it? So is it in quarters? Is it in months? Is it in days? So for instance, when I say frequency equals four, this denotes that the time series will be in a frequency of quarters. So that will be each data point represents one quarter's data point. Uh, and with that, we're gonna go into the R portion of this uh, video. Um, so if you don't already have R Studio downloaded, make sure you do that and I will see you there shortly. All right, everybody. So if you haven't yet downloaded R, I hope uh, that you take a few moments to do so. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with R, uh, R allows you to kind of run your code line by line. This is similar to maybe something you're used to with SQL or something of that nature where you can kind of run each bit uh, as you go um, or run all of it. Um, so we're going to start out by creating a random data set. Uh, further along in the course, I've got a few data sets that we can work with that are actual time series to, to actually start predicting things. But uh, for now, I just want to show you know, how to create one, a random data set, but also to just how data looks like in R. So basically you can set a random uh, data variable using uh, basically what looks like an arrow um, instead of the equal sign. You can technically actually use the equal sign as well in R. Uh, the only issue you run into with that is that there are some scope issues with setting using the equal sign versus the same symbol you see uh, that is highlighted because that's how R is. So you basically can go up to this run button um, and end up running this line. And what you'll notice is that now in the top right corner, the random data uh, value has shown up. So now you have this random data value that is persistent throughout as you continue to run more scripts. So for instance, I've created this month.ts variable that will basically create your time series object. So as we talked about earlier, in this time series function, so ts, I'm basically setting this random data um, to the data parameter. Uh, you could technically say data equals random data, but if you put it in the correct order, it's not 100% necessary. Uh, next is start. So start equals 2015 and frequency equals 12. And that basically denotes that I'm doing months and not quarters. 
Now, you'll notice there's no end parameter here, and that's not 100% necessary because you can use um, an end parameter to basically cut off the value, but it knows that I have 100 data points, so it will basically assume when the end uh, when the end is because it's going to just go to 100 data points uh, or 100 months from 2015. Now, one thing that this doesn't show is that I can actually even say uh, I would like to start in uh, month six of this year, which if you'd like to start um, your month later on, you can actually say something like C, oops, sorry, C um, 2015, or sorry, sorry, six. Actually, I'm doing this all backwards. Six, and this will basically be uh, denoting that you start in 2015 and month six. So running this with a comma, we'll basically start it in month six um, of 2015. And then quarter, we can just start with quarter. Uh, using the plot function, you can actually plot these time series. All you really need to do is say plot and it already is going to know your X and Y axis. Um, and so basically you can just hit run and you'll notice that again, see this is 2016 because this is not starting in 2015 specifically, it's starting in 2015, six months in. Uh, so it's starting much, much uh, later on this data point. If I were to, for instance, take this uh, data up here instead of say start in 2015 and then plot this, you'll actually note that, notice that the plot starts much earlier. So let's look at this starting in 2015. So now you'll notice there's a little extra six months here. Um, okay, so then we can plot quarters as well. And one thing you'll notice with quarters is it goes much longer because obviously uh, 100 divided by four makes a lot more years than 100 divided by 12. And we can show this in another way by having the lines function. Uh, basically, we're gonna plot another line over this plot over here. So we're gonna plot the month line over the quarter line. Um, and then using the COL uh, parameter, you can basically set your color. Um, two is red if you're interested. So when you run this, you'll see that now this is the month uh, random data set. Um, and with that, that is kind of our introduction to time series. From here again, we're gonna be going into things like Autodatarima, we're gonna be going into ETS, we're gonna go into basic models and model quality and things of that nature. I really just wanted to start out with what is a time series and how to use it. Um, so I'm looking forward to you know going into Autodatarima and actually starting to use this on real time series. Um, so see you later.